Hello and welcome to your first notes on vision. Vision, like sensation and perception, I will probably break up into two, if not three. We'll see how long this takes. Notes. So vision, we're really going to think about it in two different ways. Um, we're really talking about the biology of vision. So, and then we're really, today we're going to uh, focus on the structure of vision. So how light physically goes in my eye. And then we're going to talk about color vision because those are two very different things. And then later we'll talk about how we um, organize and interpret our vision. Okay, so really this is biology of the eye today. You need to know all these parts though and know their um, process or their order in which um, they, the light needs to travel in order for you to sense something. Okay, so let's look at the eye. You can fill in your chart here or uh, you need to be able to label it and then what the part does. Okay, here's the eye that we'll be looking at for the next couple slides. So you're looking at the, the side of an eyeball. So think about taking eye and slicing it in half here. Okay, so the first structure you're going to look at, the one that's this, this clear like contact lens on the outside. This is your cornea, it's the outside covering your eye. And the cornea is clear because light needs to be able to travel into your eyes. All right, so our cornea is like the, the protective layer of, the, of your eye. Right underneath your cornea, there's a couple things. Your pupil is the really dark um, area in the middle of your eye. It is adjustable opening uh, for which light enters. So if I, my pupil gets really big, a lot of light is going through. If my pupil gets really small, that means there's not a, light, a lot of light going through. Okay, so there's actually muscles around that contract that make your pupil either bigger or smaller. Okay, uh, the next part, this is our iris. The iris is the colored part um, of, your, uh, of your eye, and this is actually the muscles that we are talking about that form the color portion and they contract or they control the size of the pupil. All right, so my, my iris dilates or can restricts in response to changing light intensity. If it's really bright outside, my pupils get really small. If it's really dark outside, I want more light to be coming in, so my pupils get really big, and again, that's controlled by the iris. So you can think of like the iris of a flower as being the colorful part and the pupil being um, the dark part. Okay, now the lens is often, so, I feel like students get the cornea mixed up with the lens because we think of like the lens on the outside of our eye. So the cornea is on the outside, think of like a corn kernel, and the lens is right behind our eye. This is where the light is going, and it's still transparent, and this is what helps change the shape in order to focus our light on our retina back here. Okay, so the, it comes through our lens, and our lens is actually responsible. It flips that image upside down, if you can see that right here. Um, so here is the image of this candle that is right here. So the lens flips it upside down. If you've taken physics, you might understand the, um, the properties of the lens, but for all you need to know for this class is that the lens is responsible for focusing back here on the retina. Okay, now the retina is this layer on the um, inner surface of the eye, and this is where all the cells responsible for um, neural processing are. So we call those different cells, and we'll go into them later, but this is where my rods and cones exist, and plus the layer of neurons that begin the, the visual processing to move back into my brain. Okay, so this very thin layer here, the retina, it's a really thin layer back here. Um, this is where the lens focuses the image of my, um, my candle. All right, now the rods and cones. So there, there you have two different types of receptors on, the, on your retinal surface. Okay, now they're called rods and cones and it's, it's kind of nice because their shapes match that. Okay. So my cones here are these, these shapes you can see like if you kind of draw over it that it looks kind of like a cone. All right, this is for color. All right, my cones are associated with color. I want you to think cones, color, okay? Now my rods are different looking cells. They are longer, they look like a rod, all right? So this is an actual picture of cells. So it's nice when things look like they sound. So my rods are gonna be responsible for things that are black and white vision. And my cones are gonna be my colored vision. Okay, now they, uh, we have only have rods and cones in certain places of our eyes or certain places of our retina. 
So here's a little information about my rods versus cone. First of all, I have a lot more, almost twice as more rods as I do cones. All right. So my My rods for black and white light, I have 120 million approximately. They're in my periphery. So we talked about this with our visual fields, but your periphery are these things on the outside. Let me get a little bit farther away. The outside of your visual field, all right? We talked about that with the corpus callosum and our visual fields. And they are very, they're highly sensitive to dim light. So think about that. They're highly sensitive to dim light. Just black and white, that means like they're really sensitive to seeing in the dark, okay? They are not sensitive to seeing color, all right? So my cones are more for color, my rods are for black and white. And they're really bad at getting out details, okay? They are just kind of bringing the light in, black and white. I have a lot in my periphery, so my peripheral vision, not a lot of detail, no color. Versus my cones, I have about half as many of them and they're located right in the center of my retina. So they're right where the light is focused. They don't, we don't see colors very well when it's dark outside. Think about like um, when you're at, at dusk, you don't see light very well. They're very sensitive to color and very sensitive to detail. All right, so rods, black, white, lots of them, not a very good job at detail, but we, they're really good in the dark. And then my cones, really good at color vision, not as many of them, but they're really centered right there um, in my retina where the light is focused. Okay. All right. So let's talk about how light actually enters. So here's what happens when the light is actually focused from my lens onto my retina. This is again, looking at a cross section of my eye and focusing on, see this little box right here? We are going to blow up this box right here and look at it in detail, okay? Um, so, blown up in detail, I have cells, neurons, that are dedicated just for vision, and there's two uh, different types. We have the ganglion cells. They're the ones that right there on my, um, the cent or my retina. Okay, so here's my retina. And then you have bipolar cells, and the bipolar cells, there's the ones that connect to back here. Okay, so my bipolar cells, what I want you to notice, um, and we'll talk about bipolar cells, is that there's often more than one bipolar cell connected to different ganglion cells. Okay, so the light comes in, it's going to start a neural impulse, so that fires my neuron, okay, that's going to keep going, that signal is going to keep going back. So in this case, the dendrites are, um, are sensitive to light, and that's going to start my neural impulse. Okay, and then right here where at the, um, uh, uh, something called the blind spot is where the optic nerve all comes together and all these impulses are going to go back to my thalamus and then to my visual cortex. All right, so my neural impulse coming in, it um, it's, uh, excites these cells and then all that impulses are going to go back through my optic nerve. Okay, so first thing, Light comes in the eye, basically what I just said. Now you're going to write it down. Um, it's going to uh, start my reactions and my rods and cones on the back of the retina. Those chemical reactions activate my bipolar cells that are attached to my ganglion cells. That then um, bisolar cell activates the ganglion cells, the axons of which converge to form my optic nerve. And that nerve transmits information back into my visual cortex. So it goes to my thalamus first. So the thalamus, remember, this is my, my relay station here. My thalamus says that is sight, and then it's going to bring it, move it on to my visual cortex um, in, my, in, my, in the other portions of my brain, or the other portions of my cortex, okay? Um, pause that, rewind it, uh, go back, and then come with questions, all right? So look at, though, I do want you to notice this 3, 2, 1 up here actually moves backwards than what you think. So the light actually goes all the way back here first, then that starts the chemical reaction that goes to the bipolar cells, then go to the ganglion cells, and the ganglion cells are the ones that leave via the optic nerve, all right? So it moves backwards from what you would think, all right? So here's my eye. We're gonna do blind spot stuff in class, but you need to know that the optic nerve is um, the, in the back of the retina that goes to the back of the brain. That all converges in one spot and it, calls, it causes something called a blind spot. 
All right, so back here, my blind spot is located right where all these, uh, the nerve comes together and leaves my eye. So it's going back this way into my thalamus, into the brain. So the blind spot is the portion where all of those, those bundles come together and leave the eye. Um, it's called a blind spot because there are no receptors in this part of your eye. Okay, so I cannot see or there's no, if something is focused there, you cannot see it because there's no receptors in that part of your eye. Now, your blind spot you might have known from like your driving, so blind spots like consider that, that area in the periphery where you can't see. Okay, the fovea, I want you to think fovea focal. So fovea focal. The fovea is the central part where the retina um, and this is where all my uh, cones are located. So this is the part where light tends to focus. So here would be my fovea, or the central uh, uh, focus. So I want you to think fovea is where the focal point is. And remember, cones are responsible for all those details, the color. Um, those are all, all bundled like right here, all right? So my, my cones tend to be bundled right here by my fovea. All right, versus my rods are going to be outside of my fovea. So here's my fovea, right here. I get all my rods outside of my fovea. All right, so that's why they're not really good with details because the light isn't focused on them. Okay, now the, there we go. My optic nerve is that bundle that carries it back into the brain. My optic nerve carries it back into my brain. So visual information processing in the visual cortex, um, I want you to, so now you're actually looking at a brain cut from like the top, so looking down this. Okay, I changed my mind. We're gonna do this separate notes because it's getting too long. So we're gonna talk about how information moves from your eye back to your thalamus to the visual cortex and you can make sense of it in your next notes. I'll see you guys later.